Hi, this is Ron with Mobile Fix Automotive coming to you again. This is a fairly short video. Today I'm working on a 2007 uh, F350 two-door dually. Kind of unique here in California. Um, 6.0 diesel, uh, no start, towed in. Um, the, the first thing I want to do is I want to give a shout out to Diesel Tech Ron who has been a huge inspiration of mine for many years on YouTube. Um, super, super, I've never met him in, in real life, but he's a super, super nice guy. He doesn't cuss on his videos, gives you the information that you need. Doesn't talk as much as I do, but still great info. Um, his no start videos on the IPR valves or the injection pressure regulator valves are second to none. I mean, there's, really not much I can do to add to what he's done. However, I have not found in any of his videos where he talks about the reason why this happens sometimes, sometimes. And I just want to kind of tag on to the end of his helpful videos on how to do the IPR. Now, on this particular truck, uh, it came in... Um, Customer said he was driving it, he parked it, and went to go restart it, crank, 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 no start. Um, so it got towed into the shop. Uh, yesterday I put my computer on it and uh, checked the parameters. We're not going to go through all that because Diesel Tech Ron's already done that and he did an awesome job. By the way, Ron, we miss you, man. Um, you, you left us way too soon and I'm sure that you took more information with you. Uh, that you could have shared, um, which is really sad, but glad we sh you shot the videos to help us with what you did. I've been turning wrenches a long time, and when I can look at another professional mechanic and say, dude, that guy was awesome, um, that's saying an awful lot because I don't trust a whole lot of people, uh, at least not underneath the hood of my cars. But anyway, getting back to this, uh, he talks about the IPR valve and having a hole in the screen, and I have found a couple of times where I have kind of isolated where that came from, and I'm not sure if he just left it out of his videos, if he never really thought it was important, um, whatever his, uh, his reasoning being. So I'm going to basically just tag this on. So we have a 6.0 diesel, no start. Customer said it cranked, wouldn't fire up. I put the computer on it. The computer was showing the IPR, or actually the, the, the IPR pressure, uh, Above zero, but below 300 PSI, it needs 500 to start. Uh, pressure regulator percentage on the scan tool was above 85%, which means it's trying to command it closed all the way and it still can't build pressure. And that's where we get the IPR screen with the hole in it, debris holding the pinnel valve open. So with that being said, um, let me show you kind of what I do and what I explain to my customers. Okay, first off, Here's the IPR valve, okay, injection pressure regulator. This is on underneath the turbo. For those of you that haven't watched Diesel Tech Ron's video, which I'm going to let him show you the R&R &R because he does it way better than I can do it. Um, but it's down there where that little black hole is. Underneath the turbo, that's where the IPR valve goes, okay. And this vehicle wasn't starting because it's not building H-pop pressure because it has a hole in the screen right there. That means that there's debris inside this valve holding it open. Now, um, I've noticed comments on, I'm gonna turn this back around for just a second so you can see the truth in my eyes. Uh, I've noticed comments on Ron's videos. I like to read those uh, for everybody, mine and everybody else's. And they've said, you know, hey, thanks for showing us how to back flush it. You know, you don't have to put a brand new one in every time, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's right. However, the do-it-yourselfer at home doesn't have to warranty his work. Well, he kind of does, but he doesn't have to do it for free. When it happens, well, he kind of does. So here's the deal. All right, this valve right there, see all the rust and the corrosion on that? Okay, this, this truck's got well over... 200,000 miles on it, and here's the deal, okay? As a professional repair shop, the customer's gonna pay me all this money to tear into this thing, change this valve. I can clean it and put a spring kit in it, but do I really personally wanna warranty the electric control solenoid on that valve when these valves are 300 bucks brand new from Ford? 
Uh, actually, they're less than that, but that's the general cost over the counter to the customer um, is in that neighborhood. And for me, because it's an old valve, it's obviously the original valve that came on the engine. How much longer is the electric uh, solenoid actually going to last? So for me, I'm going to go ahead and put a brand new one in for the customer. I've already talked to him about this, gave him the option, and you know we both agree that putting a brand new one in is the way to go. So with that being said, just for those of you that think you don't have to change it, you don't really have to. You can clean it, put a spring kit in it, but if that thing's got a couple hundred thousand miles on it, you might as well just go ahead if you have the money and change it so you don't have to go back in there. Now let's get back to why I shot this video. So for those of you that have six liters that have dealt with the EGR cooler problem, one of the issues that this engine has is the EGR coolers failing, overheating and cracking and putting coolant into the intake manifold. Uh, it's a domino effect. Once the coolant gets into the manifold, it gets into the cylinder. Uh, coolant expands exponentially compared to compression. Uh, as the coolant expands, the air has no place to go, so it lifts the cylinder head, which stretches the torque to yield bolt, and that's what blows the head gasket, and then it gets really ugly. One of the things that a lot of people don't bring up is the fact that a lot of these EGR cooler failures aren't even due to the EGR cooler itself. It's due to what's called an engine oil cooler, which is inside the front of the block underneath your uh, oil filter and fuel filter, primary fuel fil or secondary fuel filter uh, assembly, okay? Um, and here's what I want to bring forth for you guys' consideration and gals, okay? This hole was put there by a piece of debris, all right? There's no, there's no doubts about that. Something had to blow through a metal screen to get stuck in there. Well, underneath your engine oil cooler, which is inside the front of your engine, there is a pre-screen that looks just like this, okay? And anybody that's changed the oil coolers yet has probably seen this, and probably every one of them that got pulled out, a section of the screen was missing. This screen is the pre-filter screen for your H-pop, for your, for your high-pressure oil pump, okay? So if this screen is allowing debris to flow through it, carbon, buildup, pieces of metal, anything that's floating through the, the system, it's going to allow it to go in to here. So what I tell my customers is that if this screen has a hole in it, obviously putting a new IPR or cleaning this is going to get the engine running again most of the time. But what you end up with is the potential for it to do the exact same thing later on, whether it's a day later, a week later, a month later, or a year later. Uh, with the fleet accounts that I've had that have these 6.0s in them, the thing that I've noticed the most is 50% of the time I do an IPR valve with a blowout like this and it starts back up, they usually will run for a year or two without another problem. But I've had quite a few 6.0s that have had this problem and when I just simply just put a screen and clean it and put it back in, uh, I've had anywhere from a couple of days to a week later where it no starts again, they bring it back in, it's got another hole in the screen. And what, what I tracked it down to on multiple occasions is the fact that the pre-screen on the H-pop underneath the cooler is actually what was causing it. Uh, dirt and debris was just going through the screen and getting into the H-pop system. And, you know, th this pinnel valve is very sensitive. Any debris at all, even a tiny piece of rubber from an injector um, that may not be, make the injector bad, but it's a, it's a tiny enough slither that it'll start plugging these. And that's what I see a lot. So... Uh, just tagging that onto the end of the 6-liter IPR um, and, uh, and also the first chance I've really had to give Diesel Tech Ron a, a, a big thumbs up from, from the other Ron, which is me. And, uh, dude, we miss you. Wish you were still around. There's still a lot of diesel stuff I need help on, and uh, I do the best I can for me and my customers um, to get them in and out. But... Uh, if you have any questions, uh, the best thing to do right now with the situation we're on with lockdown in America is um, to send me an email um, through my website, and I only respond to the ones that are legitimate questions. So um, if you've got a good one, I'll, I'll try to help you out, but uh, I get overwhelmed. So 
be patient with me. If you like the videos I'm doing, give me a thumbs up, subscribe to me. Um, I've now added a link underneath all my videos um, that if you want to donate to help me so I can continue to give information and help people out, um, any, anything, a dollar, five dollars, hundred thousand, I don't care. Um, anything to go towards the videos would be helpful. So uh, that's all done securely through the Square system. So, all right. So once again, this is Ron with Mobile Fix Automotive, and this was information on the 6.0 no-start IPR valve. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, guys.